We had our own house. We had, it looked like we were crashing there like punk rockers because it was a big house and all there was was like one bed and one couch and one TV. But they did have a pool. I swam laps. It was warm weather. So 2021 was a whole different story. And then we got vaccinated. So we were excited about the future. So it was nice the second time around. How crazy. We got vaccinated. We were expecting all this hoopla. And two months later, people started getting breakthrough cases. And then yeah. they want to start selling the, the fucking vaccine. And people are like, dog, it's breakthrough cases. But mm -hmm. you're not going to die. Well, guess what? Nobody's fucking punching the ticket. You know, yeah. I talked to a friend of mine yesterday. They just go school, closed the school district in Jersey, down yeah. south. My girl I grew up with is a principal down there. She's like, I'm out of a job yeah. for three weeks. They're just going to lock it up for the fucking month because by the time they get back and testing and shit. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't, all these fucking breakthrough cases, it makes you think, but then people are you're going to die. Nah. What a fucking mind fuck for America. You know, it it's, really is sucks because every time you get optimistic there's there's new news and then the news is always uh it's always more alarmist than it needs to be like the headlines are always try to scare you and then if you read the article it's like oh it's not that bad it's not that bad they try to freak you out and it, and at this point i'm vaccinated i just got my booster what am i gonna do i'm just i you know it's not like they're paying us to stay home I would love to stay home and make money, but it's not happening for me. How's so the I got to get out situation? there and do stand up. What's that? How's the work situation for you? Work situation is fine. It's not the best, but I'm surviving and I'm working. And I just, I like doing stand up so much more than I did before 2020. I'm just so into it. I've got new material, obviously, from going down to New Louisiana. And uh, I just, I'm, it's exciting to do it. I, I'm way into it right now, you know? That's good, man. <laughs> no, it's very good because it can become a job and it can get tedious and it can be, especially traveling, you know about that. Traveling's exhausting and then the crowds every night exhausting, but it's actually good I'm not working every weekend because it's just too much, you know? You know that. You sold me on that philosophy a while ago. You know, two weeks a month was your policy, right? That was it. Or less. Yeah. That's what I can handle. Listen, yeah. you have a schedule. And they throw, I look at these tours people are doing. And this, you know, you look at them and you go, nope, nope, <laughs> nope, cool. nope. And then you see some guys that they get it. They, You see that they're rounding it out. They're just trying to get out there to stay relevant. They're not yeah. trying to. And that's what I would do now. If I was out yeah. there, I'd just be hitting my favorite spots to stay relevant friday saturday four shows get me in and out no Absolutely. more drama no radio no nothing we'll fucking promote it if they come they come if they don't what do you want me to fucking do you know right. what do you i can't control this fucking what people think or whatever it's not wide open but then you look at like nick games uh -huh. and you watch you know you see what tom's doing our, our good friend tom's, tom's working Sakura, a lot which is good arenas. for me because i open for him sometimes that's perfect so that's good that is fine with me you, you know, know, you see what these guys are working, but they all have an out plan. Yeah. If you speak to Tom, he'll say to you, bro, I'm doing this for this period, and then I'm done. Yeah. Then yeah. I'll focus on Makes podcasting. Sense. I'm doing it. You know, I spoke to Bert, and he's like, I'm doing this for a certain time, one more tour. Yeah. For me, I had just been burnt out. It had become a job. Yeah. And I wanted to unwind a little bit. I was just coming to a new place. I don't want yeah, to land man. here, and three weeks later, I got to pack up on a Tuesday. I don't know Newark Airport. You know, I got to learn, you know, I got to attack it slow. You dude, don't want to crack. Dude, I, we, we were at New York Airport together one time. I don't know if you remember. And oh, you yeah. walked straight up. You walked straight up to Jersey Mike's sub shop. And you're like, what the fuck are you doing here? You got real sandwiches here. We don't need no fucking Jersey Mike's. <laughs> and the kid was just like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm pissed at Jersey Mike, dog. <laughs> Did you ever have it? That's okay if you're in Iowa. Yeah, I had Jersey Mike's, bro. I can't lie to you. And it was good like three times. It's good. And then my fucking no. and then my fucking like conscience came into play. I'm a Catholic and I think about oh shit. And then my conscience came into play and I thought about how I'm cheating on Italian people who come over here on a fucking boat with a salami to give us culture and food and we're fucking eating that shit. From yeah. fucking Fat Mike's, whatever his fucking name is, Jersey yeah. Mike. But meanwhile, yeah. there's an Italian guy that he's got fucking, you know, when the, what, what do you call that shit? When the pasta goes to your toes and your feet hurt? Gout. gout. You know, he's got gout. 
He's standing on his feet all day waiting to make a fucking sandwich, and you're going to fucking Jersey Mike's cocksucker, and it didn't come Dude. to fucking fruition. Till I came to Jersey and I saw Jersey Mike's. The first time I saw Jersey Mike's in Jersey, I actually stopped the car and looked in there. And I had to think twice if I had a gun in the car. Because I, I swear to God, I become ISIS. I will ISIS every fucking Jersey Mike's. And then the biggest ISIS I want to do is 42nd Street New Year's. Shoot the fucking Olive Garden down. Me and 20 other fucking Italians. And we'll give a fucking pass to Curtis Silva, the guy who from the Guardian Angels that want to yeah. be mayor. Come on, this is how you be mayor. Lock that fucking Olive Garden. You lock that Olive Garden up, you'll get 10 million votes. <laughs> Motherfucker. Sorry I get emotional about Olive Garden and fucking Jersey I, Mike's, but enough I, is enough. God, suck us. Dude, I heard Jersey Mike is from Delaware. Fuck Jersey Mike. Uh, Fuck I, Jersey Mike. I'm totally making that up. I don't know if that's And true I'll tell you what. Listen, let's talk uh, honestly. Yeah. I went to somebody's house maybe a month ago. They were watching football, and they had a roast beef sandwich with coleslaw. Mm -hmm. And they cut it. You know, they got like a foot long, and they yeah. broke it into 30 pieces. And I ate one. You know, you're there. You got a little THC in your system from the night before. <laughs> you sure you know? do. And I took a bite of it. And right away, it was like eating lamb. <laughs> like, it was like eating veal. Like, I felt guilty. Like, somebody's fucking lamb is dead. And I couldn't imagine. Why am I feeling guilty about roast beef with coleslaw? It's not a cake. I'm not going to die. It's just three little fucking points. Like, ah, it's the Jersey Mike's that's got me yeah. fucked up. Keeping you down, dude. Now, Blimpy. Let's talk about Blimpy Bass. Please. I Blimpy, thought we'd never get to this. Yeah. Blimpy is deep in my DNA. Okay. My now we're daughter, getting somewhere. All right. Yesterday, about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, me, Jim Florentine, my daughter, and Jimmy's son and my wife went to this really good Italian restaurant. We were running late. The guy called. He goes, I'm, I'm making pasta. Come over. We went down there. I love Joe from El Nido. I, went, I brought yeah. Joe Rogan there. I'm going to bring fucking Mike there one day when he's here past yeah. five. Because I don't want him to drive up two hours for El Nido. Then he's going to drive two hours back <laughs> full. And he'll call me. I fell asleep in Tom's River like you did last Tuesday. So, so my, I took my daughter. And my daughter, I don't know, when we're going out, we're leaving. We're talking by the door. Yeah. And Joe's like, take a card. You know, if you know anybody. So my daughter takes a card. This is two weeks ago. Yesterday, yeah. she drops it on me. She says, Dad, guess who I gave that card to? And I go, who? She goes, my teacher. I told her, I said, here, this is the restaurant for you. And she's like, what? Do you recommend it? And my daughter's like, fuck yeah, I recommend it. And she goes, uh, okay, I'll let you know how it is. So I told the owner what my daughter did. He goes, tell her. He sent me back a text. He goes, tell her to get the name and reservation. It's uh -huh. on me from, I, no, Mercy told him, if you go in there, tell the owner you know me, right? My yeah. fucking eight-year-old yeah. daughter. I'm like, oh, 